Again, it's Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit Talk and Sprint Car Racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad you joined us. We are in the Hercules Tire Studios in Concord, North Carolina. Ashley Stremme and Steve Poston. Ashley, you know, you've been out of Volusia. I've been out. I went out, got to, made it to Screven and, and get going with, with all of our racing stuff. It's like our business is like the first day of school, isn't it? It really is. The off season is so short anymore. Yeah. But there's still no other feeling than getting back to the track and being there in person and finally getting to see sprint cars again. Seeing who's who <laughs> and who's what on the NASCAR side, who's wearing what kind of fancy crew uniforms yes. with different suits and everything. Um, just just catching up with people is such a neat part about it. This thing, and, and, and we had such a weird off season. We talked a little bit about it last week with no PRI. A lot of us didn't go to the Chili Bowl and everything like that. It, it is. It's, it's, it's like that first day back in school. And then you get to the first day back in school, and now we're already up and running looking for spring break, okay? Because... <laughs> Once it hits, it hits hard. That's the nature of our beast. <laughs> and and this year for the World of Outlaws, it, it is full oh throttle gosh. all the way through, no stopping. Uh, yeah. And I think they've learned from the experiences of last year that, you know, we need to keep this train rolling in case something crazy happens again. But uh, these guys are definitely going to have to pull their bootstraps up and dig deep now. Yeah, absolutely. If the the World of Outlaw teams were worried about not running too much last year, I think they ran 54 <laughs> times. Uh, I think the fine folks just down the road at Concord yes. at the World Racing Group have got something for them uh, to keep them busy and, <laughs> and really across the board. And and as we, as we unfurl this in the spring, we'll talk about a lot of our favorite series and tours, but uh, they, they are rolling along as well. And rolling along without... Shane Stewart rolling along with him. That's what we're going to talk about in the program, but um, can't wait just to get his perspective on uh, his uh, his big change in, 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 in the way life will be across the board for him. Yes, especially already changing. How hard is it for him to see things yeah. and races happening without him First being there? First day of school there? and he's yes, not there. Exactly. <laughs> um, Shane has always been great to us. He's a good guy and it's just incredible and it'll be exciting to hear what he has to say now that he's looking through things differently this a year. Absolutely, and if you're not familiar, Shane has taken over the reins of, uh, let's see, Port City Raceway, a little one-eighth mile micro track, a micro sprint track in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, he has hung up the goggles, the racing <laughs> goggles. So uh, look forward to talking to Shane, that's for sure. And look forward to a whole lot more. So uh, stay with us. Shane Stewart, he joins us next here on Wing Nation. Do a little shopping? Well, I heard an apple a day keeps the doctor away and 10 keeps the competition away. I got you a Granny Smith seeing you're a little sour. From sweet to tart and everything in between, Sage Fruit supplies every variety of apple that shoppers may be looking for. For over three generations, they've been providing customers with only the best apples, pears, and cherries that Washington has to offer. You're finally taking my advice. Well, something like that. I figured out how to get my 10 apples in a day. Sage Fruit, it's the choice of champions. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit. Let's go right to it. The Hercules Tire Hotline. Joining us uh, from the state of Oklahoma is Shane Stewart. Hello, Shane. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me back on. I appreciate it. Well, great to catch up with you. Excitement in your life, that's for sure. But I, I actually do want to go back a little bit, Shane. Uh, there's a number of you drivers in about the same age category that as the seasons unfold, we wonder what the future looks like. And during this off season, you made the announcement that you were hanging up the helmet and you had taken over the uh, the uh, ownership of the uh, Port City Raceway in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The decision to retire 2020, how did that all come together for you? Well, several things happened. Um, and, I, you know, I'm... I, I've said it to you guys before in other interviews. I feel like it's, you know, when things start happening, I feel like I'm a, it's a meant to be, I'm a meant to be kind of guy. Yeah. So, um, you know, I was complaining to my buddy Andy about what my next steps were going to be and, and pit stop potties wasn't growing as quickly as Chad and I had wanted it to. And, and, and Andy said, well, you know, Hey, what about maybe buying port city raceway? And, and of course at that time I didn't know it was for sale and, I knew the owners um, very well that that had the track and and they've had it for the last three years and they've grown that track and and it has a really good name in in the micro industry and now in the midget industry as well. So um, when that was mentioned to me, my wheels got to rolling in my head and I thought, you know what, uh, maybe I can reach out to some of my, some of my buddies and and see if they're interested in going into this venue with me and 
And I reached out to Kevin Rudine and when he was excited about it, uh, obviously we found out the track was, was for sale. Uh, then we got the balls rolling and, and uh, everything worked out really well. And, you know, everything down to, you know, selling our house in Indy, uh, we came, uh, we came back to Oklahoma for the shootout and we found a house, which right now the housing industry, uh, in Oklahoma and Indy is nuts. Like a house comes on the market. If you don't jump on it, you're not going to get it. And when we found a house that we liked, we end up getting it and, and everything has just really worked out well for us on the, on the timing side of it. And, um, you know, it's, it's meant to be. So, you know, and there was some things that was going on with my racing and I didn't know what my next steps were going to be. And, um, of course, when this got presented to me, uh, it was a good opportunity for my family. And, you know, this isn't a, you know, if I was to land a really good sprint car ride again, it's still a two or three year deal. And then I was going to be back in the same position I was in last year looking for a job. And, uh, you know, this is a, a 20 year plan um, to, to continue to work at port city and grow it. And, and, um, so I don't really have to worry about what my next steps are going to be anymore, which is, which is relieving. So, um, we're excited about it. Shane, I know you're the type of guy that when you're in, you're all in and you say it's a 20 year plan. And once you start to find the right people that you connect with and get great employees, is there a chance that you could still dabble with sprint car racing? I mean, is, or have you really come to terms with the fact that you're kind of solid with your career and you're good with it? Or do you really still hope that that door is still open? Maybe not full time. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, a, it's a good question. But right now, like there's so many little projects that we have going on at the track and, and there's things that uh, we're wanting to do before the season starts. I honestly have not even thought about it. I've I've watched the races in in Arizona, and not one time have I thought, man, I would rather be there than than working at the track. So, um, I don't know. We'll we'll see how it all plays out. But I don't. I haven't missed it at all, and I feel like that's another sign that it was a good good timing. And I, I just don't see myself jumping in a sprint car two or three times a, a year and and being competitive and that would frustrate me. So, um, right now my focus is the racetrack. Um, you know, we, we got the racetrack in, in really good condition. We have uh, a group of employees that, um, some of them are leaving, but most of them are staying around. A lot of them have been at the track for a long time and, uh, we're, we're looking forward to working with them and, you know, it's a, it's an operation, you know, there's 30, 30 plus, uh, people that actually help, uh, the track have an, an event on a one in on any of the night. So, um, it, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a big learning curve for, for Jen and I, and, and we're, we're fortunate because the owners, um, are all sticking around to, to help me learn how to work the track. And, uh, Mike and Megan Eubanks are obviously on the other side of it. And, and they're helping us with, you know, it's just little things like, you know, getting signs figured out around the racetrack and, um, you know, getting people to pay for those. And, and uh, it's just, you know, there's a lot of work that's involved behind the scenes to, to make a little track, even like Port City work. Amazing. It really, truly is. We're going to talk more about Port City and a whole lot more, but we do need to step away. Hang in there with us. Uh, more with Shane Stewart coming up in just a moment. Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to the checkout. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. The Hercules Tire Hotline is where we're going back to a 2015 Kings Royal Champion, 37-year career in World of Outlaw and Sprint Car Racing. Shane Stewart's on the line, new owner of the Port City Raceway in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Shane, I want to go back, though, to last year. One of my favorite stories um, was, was years back. When, uh, when Fred Raymer was down and out, and then he said, I'm coming back for one year, and I'm going to end on my terms, okay? While you weren't necessarily as de as decisive as that, you got a couple of wins. You picked up a win with Bernie's car up at Williams Grove, and you won with Jason Johnson Racing. How important 
was that for that to be, if indeed that's your final year and actually your final win for Jason Johnson, how important is that to your to your overall uh, where you're at with it all? Yeah, no, that was huge. It really was. And, and honestly, like I just had fun last year. I, I enjoyed racing again. Uh, you know, Bernie's operation is a little bit different than some of the situations that I'd been uh, in, you know, at least the last uh, six or seven years. You know, I had to go to Bernie's shop and work on the car and, and clean clean the car and clean the truck and trailer. And it was like old school again for me. And, and I enjoyed that. And, you know, racing with Bernie and Betsy, uh, there was zero pressure. Even when we had, you know, our bad nights, which we didn't have many, but we did have some. Uh, it was it was just no problem. We'll work on it and try to make the team a little bit better. And, you know, Bernie's got uh, an older guy that builds his engines uh, in his back pocket. And that guy is a genius, uh, Charlie Garrett. And, uh, you know, to be able to meet him, uh, I wish I would have met him 10 years ago because I really feel like he would have helped my career a lot. But to meet him, uh, to work with him and just, I don't know. It just was. It just was all meant to be. And obviously, getting the opportunity to race for JJR, uh, winning at Lakeside was huge. Uh, and my family was there too, which was not a, a normal occurrence uh, last year. And um, you know, I just felt like it was an all. I just it was a, a big circle. Uh, and I felt like that win um, was uh, you know a, a very uh, closing moment for me. And cause at that time I, I knew the port city thing, uh, was a big possibility of happening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, my mind was already starting to switch, you know, and starting to focus on that. And, um, winning at Lakeside was really big and obviously being competitive with Bernie's car was, was a lot of fun. And, and, uh, but, you know, I've had a great career. I've, I've been able to drive for some great car owners and, and I've been able to win some big races and there were some races that I wish I would have won, but I felt like the races, the big races that I didn't win, I was competitive in those, you know, this year, um, you know, we were leading the heat race at the national open and broke and that, that kind of ruined our night, but I, we were competitive. Every time I went to Williams Grove with Bernie, I was competitive and that was not my favorite track. And everybody knows that. So, um, you know, there was a few times, uh, that I, sh I felt like I should have won or could have won the Knoxville nationals, uh, and things didn't work out, but I was competitive and, uh, to end on my terms, to end healthy. Um, you know, when you start having kids, uh, especially at my age, uh, you know, that changes things. And, and, and that's another thing too, is, you know, I have a, a few more people that's involved in, in my, in my life now, besides my family. And, you know, if, you know, to put myself in a situation where you go out and, and race and possibly get hurt or something crazy like that, and knowing that you have a business to take care of, uh, that plays, plays in your mind too. So, um, but you know, I've had a great career and, and no regrets and, and I was able to travel the world and meet some great people. And, and some of those people like Kevin Redeen are, are still with me and helping me on the, on the business side of things. And, and that to me means a lot. Uh, you couldn't have said it better, Shane, you know, the people that you meet along the way in this industry, um, are, play a huge part into your life one way or another. And you talked about your family, and I, I want to talk about that a little bit. Obviously, your wife, Jen, and then your kids, Nixon and, and Lane, who just turned one recently. <laughs> yeah. um, hard to believe. But what's that transition been like? Obviously, picking them. You've been traveling forever, but actually moving them from Indy to, to now Oklahoma. Has that transition been a struggle? What has that been like just from a family man side of things? Um, well, obviously, when the Port City thing uh, got brought up, I, I went straight to Jen to, you know, because her family's from Illinois. So um, it's going to be a little bit, you know, longer of a drive for them or her to go see her parents. And so I wanted her to be comfortable with that. And, you know, anytime you pick up your family and move, um, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate because my kids are still young, but, you know, the, the anxiety level with Nixon of changing school, she's only in kindergarten, but she's still leaving some good friends at home and we we met some great people that lived across the street from us and and Nixon became really close with Lauren and and that was tough saying goodbye to them and you know so that it does it it makes you uh think about things more so than just packing your bags and jumping a motorhome and going to the next race you know I mean it's a big move to 
to move your family and uh, thank goodness, um, you know, Nixon likes her new teacher and, and uh, her first day of school was yesterday and that all went well. I think mom, mom had a harder time with it than Nixon. <laughs> um, but, you know, Lane, you know, the good thing about it is there's a group of kids that race at Port City um, and we're going to be able to see them mature and, and hopefully grow into um, really good race car drivers. But there's kids at the racetrack and I'm excited for my kids to be able to grow up around that racetrack and um, become friends with some of them and their families. And, and that part of it, I'm, I'm really looking forward to. Racetrack friends and racetrack kids. I think about it when I watch all the kids out at Millbridge. It's just like all the kids are running around and, and everyone's all involved and, and, and you hear the stories and it's just a, it, it's a, it's a neat way for your children to grow up. And uh, it's, it, it's really neat, uh, really neat across the board. Shane, we always appreciate the time. We certainly wish you the best with uh, a 43 race schedule. You've lost your mind there at Port City Raceway. Uh, we wish you the best with an, an aggressive schedule and some, uh, and some great racing with the micros out there in Oklahoma. Yeah, thank you. No, we, we have some cool races coming up this year. Um, uh, you know, Keith Coons is, is going to move his KKM give, uh, give back yeah. challenge race uh, to Port City this year. And um, we've got a couple of uh, USAC races coming up that we're going to be um, doing with Brady Bacon. Uh, and of course, at the end of the year with, with Keith's races, it's going to be a three-day power eye midget race. So uh, we've got some cool things, and of course, there's always big races, uh, you know, throughout the season at Port City, and we're going to be busy, but it's going to be good. going to be good, that's for sure. Thanks again. We wish you the best. We'll talk with you down the road here, Shane. Thank you, guys. There we go. Shane Stewart joining us here on Wing Nation. We need to step away. We've got a little bit of Twitter fun and a, a lap around the racetrack all coming up. Do a little shopping. Well, I heard... An apple a day keeps the doctor away, and tan keeps the competition away. I got you a Granny Smith seeing you're a little sour. From sweet to tart and everything in between, Sage Fruit supplies every variety of apple that shoppers may be looking for. For over three generations, they've been providing customers with only the best apples, pears, and cherries that Washington has to offer. You're finally taking my advice. Well, something like that. I figured out how to get my 10 apples in a day. Sage Fruit, it's the choice of champions. back you're watching wing nation presented by sage fruit and it is your time of the week that's right it's time for the tweet your seat and this tweet of the week comes from the sunset yes at the dirt tracks and none other than the first night of the wild wing showdown in arizona at the arizona speedway incredible there were so many sunsets I that i saw but uh marlon hansen tweeted this in so, so good. There I'm, is nothing like a sunset at a racetrack. Sunset at a racetrack. <laughs> Lincoln Speedway has one of the best sunsets. Yes. Knoxville's does. Mm -hmm. Williams Grove, when they put it over the over the bridge. Oh, my God. Poured overlooking the time. I mean, <laughs> we love sunset pictures. We do. Send them to us. Maybe it is yours. <laughs> Let's take a lap around the sprint car world. All right. Headed into turn number one. We mentioned it early on. No rest for the outlaws. Wow, Ashley, they are going to be busy. For 16 years, they've wrapped up Evolution and sat idle for a couple of weeks. Right. Not now. Not this the year. Dirty South Swing, Dixie Speedway in Georgia, Talladega Short Track in East Taboga. They've been to those tracks before, Ashley. Yes. Then you're going to add some new ones. Yes, Magnolia Motor Speedway, Revolution Park Speedway in Louisiana. So, oh, my gosh. So it is good. so cool. Great, great <laughs> stuff. No rest for the outlaws. Make our way off from turn number one into turn number two. And this was one of the – I love this, okay? We talk about speed weeks. Ohio Speed Week yes. is epic. Ashley, you know, Pennsylvania Speed Week is epic. <laughs> yes. We have this little valley in the middle. Mm -hmm. That kind of gets lost. Yes, it does. Yes. Except they have their own Speed Not Week this, this year. year. That's right. <laughs> it is Western Pennsylvania Sprint Speed Week, five nights, five tracks, Ashley. Yeah, they kick it off Wednesday, June 2nd at Michael's Mercer Speedway. Then they head off to Thunder Mountain, then Lernerville, Sharon Speedway, Tri-City Raceway. Nice. Each awesome race stuff. pays three thousand dollars to win, which is a, which is a, right in the range of where they are mm -hmm. racing in that part of the country. Two fifty to start. They're going to work on a point fund. I think Schaefer will awesome. just come on board as a new partner for them. I love this. I love. I, I had a chance to go to Mercer and Lernerville a couple of years ago. I love Western Pennsylvania, and I love that they're getting a chance to have their own speed week. So Agreed. fun, fun stuff. All right, here we go. Western Ohio. We talked a little bit about Ohio and Ohio Speed Week. What a boom! They're having in Western Ohio. Fremont 
They just announced 20 races for their 70th anniversary season at the Sandusky County Fairgrounds. The Attica Fremont Series, the Fast Series, the All-Stars are all part of the action at Fremont. Then over to Attica Raceway, it's the second World of Outlaws date to go with the Brad Doty Classic. it's nice. They double up on World of Outlaw dates. That's yes. something good. And they're adding seven rows of seating to the grandstands. So, you know, it's incredible that these places are just emphasizing their facilities absolutely i can't imagine adding seven rows to the top of the grandstands at attica it is neat the fast series this is so weird the way this went okay fast used to be the series between attica and fremont mm -hmm. okay yes. and then fast decided they're going to go on the road to become a traveling series so attica and fremont do the attica fremont racing series fast has gone on they have a 23 race schedule this year two races pay $20,000 to win, two races pay $10,000 to win. I would say things are good in Western Pennsylvania. I would have to or agree. Western, or in Ohio, <laughs> Western Ohio go. too. Go, yes. Western Pennsylvania and Western Ohio. <laughs> yes. Looks like good. Ashley, when I look back at last season, one of my, we're heading to turn to four here, mm -hmm. okay? When I head back, look back at last season, one of my favorite memories, you were part of that with Jacob Allen won at Dodge City Raceway Park. That had to be really neat. It really was. I mean, Jacob's an incredible soul, and that facility is absolutely incredible. And I am so excited to see what the Delanskys do with this place now that they've taken over and are the um, track owners right. there and just excited to see what they're going to bring to the table and really pack that place out. Craig, the crowd pleaser, yes. is a 60 time, a 66 time winner. He's seen it all across the world, mm -hmm. so he certainly knows racing and racetracks. Julie, she is a graphic specialist, promotions, apparel, souvenir. They're going to put it all together, mix it all up with that state-of-the-art facility, and we'll see what happens. They've got 360 sprints, 305 sprints, modifieds. It is going to be neat. Fingers across, thumbs up for what's going on at Dodge City Raceway Park. That is really, really neat. A lot of excitement in the world when you look at all of our lap around the racetrack. It is. I think the dirt world's in a great place, and it's just continuing to grow, and you're seeing things like this happen. Shane taking over track ownership, the Delanskys jumping on board. Yeah. These guys who are actual racers who are becoming part right. of the yep. industry in a different way is only going to elevate things even more. And the common denominator with all of them is they have a passion for the sport. That yeah. is for sure. Stay with us. More Wing Nation in just a moment. Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to check out. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. We are in the Hercules Tire Studios in Concord, North Carolina. Ashley Stremme and Steve Post. And Ashley, we, we all get geeked up about Volusia and, and a couple weeks ago, Screven and even Arizona. Mm -hmm. But there is something missing in the sprint car world <laughs> until next Saturday, next weekend, when the fabulous Lincoln Speedway has the icebreaker. That is an event that, that everyone <laughs> loves, everyone gets frustrated about, and it is, it, is, it is part of sprint car lore. It's funny because weeks ago, I'm like, how many days till the icebreaker? I know. You know. And I don't know why. I mean, I guess because it's my home area. It's what I grew up doing as a kid. I remember going there and, and they're grating snow off the track so we could watch. <laughs> you know, I just remember that. And it's, I don't know, for me, that's the kickoff to the season because it's still cold. You know, you go to Vol Volusia, it's warm. It's nice. It's beautiful. It doesn't really feel yeah. like a season opener. It's you not know? real. Yeah, yeah, it's not real. You got to go somewhere cold where there's still snow. Lincoln, 32 the degrees, over. snow on the racetrack. You got to brush the snow off your seat. Your, your, right. your beer freezes up in your hand. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's it's good. It's that, good. That's right. That's that don't a even season phase opener. the posse fans. No. That just that just gets them all fired up and wound up and ready to go. So excited about what's happening with Shane Stewart and certainly wish him and Jen and everyone the best in their new life there in Oklahoma. Uh, we appreciate Shane joining us, but more important than all of that, thank you for joining us here on Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit.